Okay, after about five minutes of listening to that, I think I would have a headache. So what I want to do is I want to start to show you common things you could do, very simple things you could do to make it sound better. So right off the bat, I'm going to shut all the reverb off because I want to start with like a dry sound so I really know what I'm working with. The reverb will cover it up a little bit too much. I don't want that. So let me back that off to zero. Right now it was on six. Okay, now it's going to be that high trebly sound without the reverb at least. Okay, so we still have that high annoying sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the treble, which is all the high end stuff, and I'm going to roll it back a little bit, okay? So it's at 10, bring it back to 5. Okay, it's a little bit better. Now we're kind of in the in the rock arena here. We're not really going for blues, jazz, uh, country, anything like that. We will in a little bit. I'll show you kind of how to tweak it to get all that. But right now we're going to kind of go for the rock sound. Now it's it's a little bit better. It's not as grating, if you will. But I'm going to try to add a couple other frequencies to see if I can round out the sound a little bit because you know you want a nice full sound most of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bass. By the way, the bass was down to three, and that's common. People don't realize how important the bass is. So I'm going to bring that in as I hit a chord so you can kind of hear it come in, hopefully. Okay, that's with the bass at 10. Now with these little amps, I suggest doing that to get the most bass you can because it's a little amp, it needs all the help it can get. So here's bass on 10, here's bass on 0, hear how much thinner that got? So we'll leave that at 10. Mid-range, I'm going to go ahead and put that at 5, just try it out. If I have mid-range all the way up to 10, it has a certain sound. Let's see if you can hear it. Sometimes you don't like that at first, but if you play with it for a while, your ear gets used to it and actually sounds pretty decent. I wouldn't go up to 10 with the mid-range um, unless I was recording a solo and I really wanted to cut through in that frequency because mid-range is good if you want something to stand out. So I'm going to dial it back to about 7 just to kind of... Kind of play with some middle idea, some mids on the mid range. Here's what we have. Okay. Now I'm going to try something that seems to work for these amps pretty well and works for a lot of little amps. The treble is just still out of control. It's at five, but it's still up there. I can hear it. So the static I want to bring down just a bit, okay? So I'm going to take the treble, bring it down to 2. Now I may have gotten too far, but I'm going to just bring a little bit in, maybe go to 3. Did you hear how that static wanted to fight through and I brought it back? So somewhere between 2 and 3 is actually pretty good for this amp. Remember to play high notes too, just to check on both spectrums, the low strings and on the high strings if you're doing some lead stuff. Alright, it's pretty decent. It gets a little bit thin up there. Okay, now I didn't even mention now the true source of the distortion sound is the saturation, the overdrive. The gain, different amps say different things, or they use different terms for it. This one has a gain knob. And the gain, if you turn it all the way to zero, you won't get any distortion. But if you start bringing it up a little bit, you'll hear the distortion start to come in. Back in the old days, they would cut the speakers with a razor blade, with a knife, or whatever. I think it was a razor blade, to get a distortion sound. And you would think distortion's a bad thing, but in rock music, and heavier music, uh, it's considered a cool thing because it just it adds that heaviness to, to music that people like. It's this sound. It's that saturated sound. Now, if I were to turn gain to uh, one in this case, it's pretty much clean sound now. 
See that acoustic type sound? Now watch as I start bringing the gain in. That's five. Okay. Now, it's easy to go too far with the gain, and I've been guilty of this because I think more gain the better, but what happens is it starts to get fuzzy again. So you got not only the gain causing fuzziness and static, you've got the treble also adding to that. So you gotta really tame that down sometimes. So now that we have the treble way down to two and a half, let's go ahead and only bring in as much gain as we need to play, let's say, ACDC, okay? So let's say we're going... I would say, you know, for a little amp, it's going to be hard to make it sound exactly like Angus Young, but let's take some distortion off. It's a little too, too, you know what I mean? Too staticky. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, it's down to three. Now, to compensate for the gain going down, sometimes the volume comes down, I'm going to bring the volume, because there's a separate knob for volume, up a little bit. We go now at least for the rhythm parts of ACDC you're gonna be okay with a little less distortion let's hear it compared to gain at 10 so can you tell what else adding gain adds? Adds a little bit of noise. So you want to really watch your gain. Don't overdo it. Um, if you do that, you're going to find that it might sustain the notes better when you do leads, which is fine. That's why a lot of people buy, you know, they have like a lead channel on their amp. Or if they use pedals, they use a, another pedal when they go to leads because they want that sustain. I recommend going lower gain for bands like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, classic rock type stuff, and then boosting the gain uh, either manually if you're just practicing leads at home or if you're on stage um, you're probably not going to use this kind of amp on stage but you never know um, add a different pedal like a boost pedal or something to kind of give it or a compression pedal to give it a little extra you know edge when you are playing leads so when you add saturation to your sound a benefit of that is also sustain so because there's so much saturation going on it lets the note live a long time if you don't have as much, the notes tend to die a little bit quicker. And a lot of lead players prefer a lot of sustain when they play because it really feels like the guitar singing then. I'll give you a quick example of that. Gain on two. See, I got quiet kind of fast. It's hard to do artificial harmonics a little bit when it's this uh, not as gainy. See, it's already getting quiet. It's already dying out. If I add gain, let's go to 10. It holds out a lot longer. And if you're really loud, feedback will kick in and it's actually pretty cool. So you can see the advantages of adding some gain if you are gonna do leads or if you're gonna do anything that you, where you need a lot of sustain. Okay, so let's finish up getting a decent tone. On the little amp, I'm going to go ahead and go back to three with the gain, not too much. My volume's at about two. It doesn't really matter because you might turn it up just to be louder or quieter. And then we have our treble at two and a half, mid-range at seven, bass at ten, and reverb's at one still, which is basically off on this amp. But I'm going to add just a tiny bit in, even though I don't really love the sound of the reverb right now. <laughs> Too much and you get this. Could be an awesome effect if you're going for that. But I don't love the sound of this reverb and it does affect the tone as you could tell. When I started bringing it up, the sound got weird, watch. Got buried in a bunch of weird sound. If I shut it off, now the sound is right in your face. So I changed my mind. I'm not even going to put a little bit of reverb on this one for now because I'm playing ACDC. I don't want it to be too, too echoey or anything like that. Now, if you're going to play you know, Led Zeppelin, you might want to add a little bit or a little bit less gain. You could play with that quite a bit. 
but the EQ will pretty much stay the same because I feel like I found the best frequencies for this particular amp. You might be on a bigger amp and you might want to do a little bit less mid-range or more, a little more treble most likely on bigger amps. Um, this is just a particular model where the treble gets a little too crazy. So don't be afraid to play with the treble, the high-end stuff, the mid, the mid-range stuff, and the bass, the low-end stuff to really make it sound full and round. That's always what I'm going for. Unless you're for some reason going for a really thin sound and you, you really want some crazy thing going on, then of course you would you could manipulate it to, to do that stuff as well. So the most important things I would say would be not to overdo the gain and to uh, come up with a round sound so that the amp sounds as full as possible because you do want to take advantage of whatever size amp that you have. Okay, now if you're playing Metallica, if you're playing Pantera or Megadeth or anything heavier, then you might want to add some more gain, but not as much as you probably think. Let's say if I'm just doing Sandman or something. <laughs> So I don't feel like that palm muting part is as saturated as, as it should be. So I'm going to bring it now up to five. For whom the bell tolls. Some people think it's Metallica. Bring it up to ten. Okay, but it's a little too fuzzy and weird, at least on this end. So you might think that sounds cool, but it doesn't always translate the best when you're playing with the whole band. So I don't care, go to 10, but eventually the better you get, the, the more you're going to roll that back a little bit, just so you can hear the tone of the guitar over the fuzziness of all that gain. So you're sort of like clearing off some headspace so that you have some room to work. So I'll bring it back, let's compromise, uh, seven and a half. Something a lot of people won't tell you is that when you add a lot of saturation, you lose power in a way, like you, you lose that uh, the punch that your guitar can have because it's so fuzzy and saturated that it's really hard for it to really hit people. So if you back off that gain a little bit and make it a little more substantial, because remember, you're clearing out all that fuzzy headroom and now you have pure sound. If you back up the gain, you're going to have more power coming out of your speaker when you're playing. Check this out. Even less gain, you get power. It's hard to say power on a tiny amp like that, but as much power as you can have. Now gain back to 10. Gets more fuzzy. So I never believe that the heaviest bands were the ones that used the most distortion. In fact, I think a lot of the bands that are the heaviest, uh, they would use like their amp distortion and it wouldn't be all the way up to 10 or 11 like Spinal Tap. But it would be, it would be more of that, you know, dialed back gain that really punches you versus the real fuzzy gain that just sort of makes the instrument get lost in the mix. Okay, so now we're going to get the question about what about like a blues type thing, maybe a little bit of an edge to the guitar, like a tube type thing. Well, there are no tubes in this amp. We'll go over tube amps later in the, like in the future. But what I want to do is I want to bring the gain way back. Not completely off though, because we want some of that saturation in there. And because I already had a decent sound with the treble, mid, and bass, I'm just going to leave it. For a lot of blues, we go no reverb. We don't want very much uh, effect, like hollow effect, like cave effect, hallway effect. And uh, let's just play a little bit of just some... Uh... Notice I went to my front pickup too, just to get a little warmer sound. Okay, you know, it's a little too brittle, I would say. It is a little amp, so I'm going to dial the gain back a tiny bit and the treble. So I want to round it off a little bit. I don't want it to be so sharp at the top. <laughs> Okay, so what I did there was I was halfway through that song or that riff and I realized I really wasn't getting the tone I wanted so I kind of cheated and I went to the second selection on my Strat which gives you kind of that little bit of a strange sound, the out of phase sound. And so I was able to kind of tweak a little bit more on the fly on the guitar but not by doing very much, I just switched the pickup a little bit. But you see I left the treble, middle, and bass the same because like I said before the amp has its best settings for its sound and that's what I left it at. 
turn the gain down just to get a little bit less of a heavy metal, more of a blues sound. And then I just did a little bit of a, you know, pickup selection change to get the sound I really wanted. When I was on my front pickup, it sounded a little too bassy. See, nothing's cutting through there. But on the very back pickup, the bridge pickup, it was too cutting. Especially on a little amp like that. So I went to the second setting and I just liked the sound of that better. So we got... And then, uh, of course, the manipulations that you could do on the guitar, uh, the volume being down a little bit will affect the, uh, the treble side of it. So if you bring it down halfway, a lot of guitars, the top end will come down a little bit. So be aware of that. Then you have your tone knobs. And if they're all the way down, they make a very funny sound. Check it out. It's not a bad sound. It's actually more of a jazzy sound. Or a Mark Knopfler sound. He does that a lot. However, if you hear that your you know, sound is a little too strange and you have your amp set decent, it might be because your tone knobs are turned all the way down. So bring them up, and all of a sudden it'll have more of an open sound. Versus... You know, it sounds like there's like a blanket over the speaker kind of a sound. So that's the reason why I left them all the way up when I did the demonstration on the amp, because I don't want the guitar affecting what the amp is doing, so I left it all wide open. But keep in mind, once you get your amp dialed in the way you want it, then go ahead and start messing with your guitar. Between the two of them, you'll find a balance of sounds that you really like. And we haven't even really mentioned pedals too much yet. Uh, that's another area that you can affect your sound. But start with the basics, the guitar and the amp. Make sure they sound great, and then adding pedals, uh, adding other crazy sounds will just be a bonus from there. Okay, I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, go ahead and try to dial in your amps and make them sound good, even if they're cheaper amps. And in the future, when you start to look at tube amps, more expensive amps, you'll take that knowledge with you and be able to make those sound even better as well. They will already sound good, but you'll make them sound great. Okay, guys, take care.